from your perspective, how hard is it for, for defenses to defend against 12 personnel? Yeah, I think if uh, you have great two, two great tight ends, I think it's um, really hard to match up personnel-wise and um, in order to defend against pass and, and the run. So, I mean, I think it makes it difficult for uh, defensive personnel. I got into this game for, you know, pretty much my mental health. I was, I was a big chubby kid growing up, and I got bullied. And, you know, uh, my baseball coach is like, you know, you can hit those guys and not get in trouble. That's kind of how I got into it. And ever since then, I think my uh, physicality and violence has kind of turned into more protection you know howdy and welcome on in raider nation there are a few very very interesting i would say literally important things that are happening in otas happening with the organization and some things that we need to discuss right so first things first you guys just got a lot of money in the bank account from cutting one of your quarterbacks you also have a potential rumor going about of you going to snag a five-time pro bowler at the cornerback position we'll talk about that briefly but then mostly what i want to discuss is the two titans that you guys have in the building and what i believe the future will hold for you guys and then you guys have had your las vegas over and under the the all the betters are going to be betting on the over under of games that has been released and we'll talk about that as well but the first thing that i want to discuss with you guys is currently the las vegas raiders who have made nothing but impactful transactions in this offseason and in the draft with you know getting legitimate talent into the building i want to say that you guys are the sixth richest team in the nfl sitting at 34 million dollars in cap space with cutting ties with Jimmy Garoppolo. And with that $34 million, one of the players that I kind of hinted to was cornerback, former cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys, Stephon Gilmore. Look, he still has some juice. I think even last year, he played very, very well in that Cowboys secondary. Of course, him being an older guy, but you guys just need talent in the building, veteran leadership in the building. I'm gonna also ramble off a few more players that you guys could possibly go on the attack for i'm not saying this for any disrespect but trevon morick who is a fourth year guy i think he is about to show us a lot of great things but hey there's no crime no shame in bringing in justin simmons another safety into the building another piece to the puzzle steven nelson cornerback for the houston texans who had a really really good season turning 31 years old so once again that older complex is going to be entering the chat and then you have Xavier howard another corner out of miami as Juice left in this body, even after being released from Miami, it was just a financial thing and it wasn't really adding up to what he was doing on the field. That could be a potential awesome opportunity as well. And of course, he is an older guy. Look at your free agencies, guys. And I want to see with that $34 million, is there someone that y'all would want your team to go after, go and get a dude? I would want to know who you would want that to be. And then we move on to another uh, important topic. And I, do, I know I didn't uh, tee this one up in my intro, but there is a young player who you guys are going to be trusting with a starting role who is getting legitimate buzz that he is being a legit leader already in the building. And, and I love it. And who is it? Who am I talking about? I'm talking about your running back, Zemir Wright, is taking. And, and, and this is the thing. You can be given the role, but it says here, he is taking ownership of Raiders starting running back job and has become not just a leader by example, but it is being reported that he is a vocal guy. He is being a vocal leader. And that's after, of course, Josh Jacobs leaving the building after five seasons with the Las Vegas Raiders. You now have Zamir Wright, a former fourth round pick out of Georgia, who's doing some really, I think he did some awesome awesome things last year and so you have a new teammate with alexander madison so he's also going to be able to help grow and, and nurture zamir white but i love what this kid's got he comes from a prestigious or respectful program in the sec in georgia so he knows what it's like to be around very competitive men and he's being a vocal leader on offense where the quarterback position is dicey this is good this is really really good and so you have garner Minshew who's going to have a young excited in control running back that's going to be there not just as a talent, but as a leader. That's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's coming from a guy whose former running back was also a leader of the team. It brings that juice. It brings a certain amount of juice into the building. And I really, really like that for you guys. But 
I also want to dive into the beautiful opportunity that you guys have of creating a 12 personnel concept with your offense. And in case you don't know, 12 personnel pretty much means in 12, the one would be the number of running backs you have on the field. And then the two in the 12 would be the number of tight ends that you guys have in the field. So when you say 12 personnel, you're automatically saying you're going to have Zamir White out there at that running back spot. And then you're going to have both Michael Mayer and Brock Bowers both out there. And so when you really think about draft night and you think about how the Las Vegas Raiders were ready to pick their next guy, all the quarterbacks were gone after this point and that it was been reported heavily that you guys wanted Michael Penix Jr. And, and then Michael Mayer has his tight end position all together by himself, but it didn't happen. And you guys had to make an audible when you said, hey, let's go get the very exciting, very athletic, very elusive, the dang near one of the best players in the entire draft than Brock Bowers. And this is the beauty that you guys, of course, the frustration was there draft night, but let's let's see what it could happen in reality. If Michael Mayer is an inline tight end, has his hand in the dirt on multiple series, then you have Brock Bowers on the opposite side of him, showing that he is going to be running a route, going to be doing some type of decoy. He's going to have an option route of some sort. And you show that again and again and again. At some point in time, as an offensive coordinator, as an offensive coordinating genius, you get to flip things around. You get to show the defense what they think they know. And then before you know it, you have Brock Bowers on the left side in a wide position, and he just chips the corner or just chips the edge. And then you have Michael Mayer, you know, faking a down block and then showing his numbers to Gardner Minshew in the end zone. And, and it's an easy play action, tricks the safety, tricks a linebacker. You know, they're not playing honest ball and you have a beautiful opportunity to have two athletic tight ends that have the effort to block. I think Michael Mayer is going to be a little bit of a better blocker. But if, when you see Brock Bowers block, it's effort. It's very not to the consistency and not to the effects of George Kittle, but it is effort. He, he wants to show that he is going to be blocking. He's just a football dude in Brock Bowers it is. And so you have potentially two legitimate tight ends and y'all aren't gonna y'all are gonna have them on the field at the same time in multiple multiple game plans and so i really really hope the frustration the anger has left the building i hope you guys are embracing the fact that you got a talented player in brock bowers and understand that you still have a talented player to michael mayer and you're just gonna have two tight ends that are just talented and you're gonna have Devonte adams on one side and then you're gonna have either jacoby myers or trey tucker on the other side and then you're gonna have both tight ends both tight ends that you like on the field at the exact same time. And then Zamir Wright, like I said, in the backfield. So you have an amazing opportunity to have just talent. Just talent to where it's easier for Gardner Menchel or, hey, by God almighty, if things start clicking with Aiden O'Connell, things can really pan out for you guys. And, and lastly, Las Vegas has put your win total at 6.5. 6.5 wins. Last year... You guys win eight and nine. Last year, you guys got eight wins. And so Vegas, whomever is seeing that you guys are not going to get better, that you guys have gotten worse, or they don't believe in AP. They don't believe in Antonio Pierce as a long-term solution. Prove them wrong. I'm going to take the over on the Raiders. Uh, I, this, I feel like that's something that I always do consistently. I feel like you guys are always low ball in the beginning of the season. You guys can definitely beat the Broncos twice and I don't give a shit who the head coach of the of the Los Angeles Chargers y'all can beat them y'all can go 4-0 in your division of course the Chiefs y'all can steal one of their games that's five wins already I don't know uh, where well, you guys got got to get two out and about I'm, I'm with y'all so let me know in the comments do you like that 6.5 you're gonna take the under you're gonna take the over let me know like comment and subscribe